welcome back on a long hiatus back to Energy Crew Podcast. This has been, we, I don't think we've, I was just talking to a, our first guest on this new season, uh, Brett uh, Chell with Cold Board Technology. And Brett, you're going to kind of get into kind of who you are real quick. But I was talking uh, before this and, and uh, I haven't done an Energy Crew Podcast in probably about seven, eight months. Um uh, for several different reasons, but the main reason was I just, you know, obviously, you know, business starts getting busier, uh, life gets busier. It also is one of those things, too, where it's like me personally, I wanted to find some passion back into the uh, Energy Crew podcast. And if I'm not passionate about it, what's what's the point at, at, in the end of it? So <clears throat> so Energy Crew is kind of taking a new uh, a, a new uh, journey, if you will. It's a uh, we're going to be discussing people's passions. We're going to be discussing leadership's passions. What makes them tick? What are they spending more of their time on that, that they know they probably shouldn't be spending on, but they're just so engulfed by it. Um, what, what is making them motivated to go to work? And I think this is important. I think passion, first off, I love how passions change. You know, my passion today could be completely different next month or the month after that. So it's always evolving. It's always changing. And you learn uh, something from someone's passion because it's not that boring, stale, Oh, my name is JP. I'm going to talk about that. My name is Brett. We're going to go over this today. It's 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 passion. It's 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 emotional. So I like that. And the and the and the last thing I want to talk about the passion side of it. And obviously, uh, again, you can tell I'm just rambling here, but it's also inspiring to people. I think when you hear about someone's passion, it's uh you know whether it's uh, people on a podcast or whatever that is, there's a sense of inspiration that comes from that. So uh, Brett, without further ado, thank you for being the first guest on this. And again, I'm, I wasn't blowing smoke when I said this before we got on live. You were the first person I thought of uh, to be the first guest coming back on to discuss passions of you know leaders and and you know entrepreneurs and founders and executives and what's going on kind of a, a, in your mind. What's making you tick? So Brett, let's kick this off, brother. Why don't you, for those that don't know you, which I don't think that's many people out there, why don't you kind of give a brief uh, five minute, uh, five minute long elevator ride kind of intro who you are, where you've been and where you're at today. Oh, all right, man. Well, I'm super humbled and uh, real happy to be back doing this with you, buddy. You know how much I love you. And I didn't know that you stopped doing this. I just see them pop up because they're still getting posted, right? Oh, that those are energy facts chats. Those are Mike Umbro. So we, that's kind of a different subject. But so this this was energy. Yeah. So I guess I got two now. I guess I got two podcasts now, right? Yeah. I know. Yeah. You're right. So we're back <laughs> on this. <laughs> uh, but I'm super humbled. Appreciate you doing this, man. Um, and happy to always do this stuff with you. As you know, me and you have been friends since oh, yeah. we did one of these like five years ago. We see each other every once in a while, but it's always just like brothers right away again. So I'm that's happy. exactly right, man. And that's, and that's, I'm, I'm being serious, man. I, that's why I was thinking of you, man. I love kind of, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, talking to you at the, you know, the cold board tech uh, booth at, you know, whether it's one of these conferences, the earth tech or, uh, all that stuff, or whether it's, you know, seeing, seeing you and your guys around or your crawfish boys and all that stuff. It's always good catching up with you, man. I just love shooting the shit with you, uh, getting kind of your insights and all that stuff. That's why I, let's, let's lay this out today. And congratulations, by the way, on that, uh, on that, uh, thing with Corvey y'all, uh, y'all teamed up on. That sounds exciting. So anyway, that's that's my personal thing. I want to say congrats out there, but go ahead. Yeah, brother. Uh, appreciate it. Corva, great guys. It's funny that that kind of comes full circle now because uh, Corva and I, we all started out. We were pseudo competition. We didn't, we kind of crossed over and, but that's where we lived for a long time. And it's nice actually to see the market maturing where we're not, we're not, not only we're not competition, we're very complimentary because yeah. the whole thing that we're doing with digital completions is so big that we all just take this is what we do. That's what I do. And that's what I do. Even IWS and those guys who are perceived competition. Now I've talked to William, their CEO. It's all like, that's what they do. It's not what we do. So we'll work with IWS too. Love so, that. Like, I love that. I, lo I love hearing that. I, lo I love hearing when good companies come together. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So me, uh, in case anybody doesn't know for a quick intro. So uh, my name is Brett Chell. I'm CEO and founder of Cold Board Technology, which is the industry's only, currently the industry's only enterprise communication company. For frack. So it's safe to say the best industry. I mean, if it's the only one's the best, right? I forget. I can't believe my <laughs> used car salesman self didn't do that. We are the biggest, the best, the fastest, the most well. We're the only enterprise communication company in frack. I mean, so, you fact check it. You're right. Yeah, you fact check it. That's it. There is no others, which is great for us. I love that. Uh, I, it, it used to be like it, where we're clear what we do now with our layer zero. And just basically being an adapter for all the services so that we're moving away from all the services, not being able to connect and communicate on site to having an adapter 
plug them all in. And so for us to do that, be the only one in that space, I just love it because it allows us as an adapter that we plug everything in to be able to work with all these other guys that we're talking about, which is yeah. so much better of an environment than being like, you have to be like on edge because who you're talking to and they're your competition and you got to go after them and we got to, you know, beat them to something. I would assume that's kind of, not to get out, not to, I would assume that's kind of exciting though, because it's like, there's no playbook in front of you. You're kind of writing your own playbook on how this is going. Yes. Yeah. That's the big thing is like the, the less we have to focus on competing and explaining why we're better than or different than or any of that, the more we can focus on saying, Hey, here layer zero, all fracks should be connected and it should be formatted. That has to exist. Every frack pad in the U.S. should be one thing as far as data is concerned. Right. Once that happens, the world is your oyster. We can connect and move and do anything. And so once you have that clarity, we can just focus on building the thing rather than, you know, a little chasing this and yep. doing that and competing there. And it's just distracting, honestly. So when market starts to get more mature like this, it gets a lot more fun. Good. All right. So I interrupted you to, yeah. to, to throw the So anyway, so founder. Yeah, founder CEO of an enterprise communication company for Frack. I've been doing this 20 years. Uh, was on the drilling side for a long time. So I spent 10 years on drilling rigs, started as a lease hand in Alberta and Canada, and then worked there for seven or eight years, doing all the worst jobs in all the worst places on earth. Uh, then did private equity for a while because I needed to learn the finance side of business. So I worked at a private equity shop, venture capital firm for five years. Um, and then started these businesses. So I've been funding and building tech companies, mostly Raptor and Cold War for the last almost 10 years now. And you've seen significant, significant growth in your company in the last, I want to say 18 months. Is that, is that, a, is that a good timeline? I mean, it's, it's, your, it's your world. So you probably know the timeline better than me, but I guess I feel like everything's 18 months ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. When we came down, we, we had a milestone. Yeah. It's been a hundred percent growth for the last three years, but two years ago, hundred percent growth was small amount of revenue. Now it's in a significant amount and then awesome. exponential. Right. So yeah, we're, we're, we're we did, we were a hundred, 130, 140 people now. So it's getting to be a sizable company for sure. Man. Well, first hats, hats, hats off to y'all. <laughs> Which is also a pretty big headache. But I, I was gonna say, okay, so let's get into this. Okay, so yeah. let's let, let's talk about this. So what, what what are you passionate about? I mean, uh, in this in your in your current world right now, what's going on in the Brett's life? What are you what are you finding? What are you waking up the morning for that you kind of whether you want to solve? What you're spending too much time at, or you're not spending enough time at that? Something that's kind of keeping you going. Ooh, this is gonna be an unorthodox answer, I think, but it's a very true. This is a genuine one, JP. Yeah. You're getting you're getting it straight. I'm having to find my passion again because this, this, the amount of work that this company has taken for someone who dropped out in grade 12. And uh, again, like we were saying, you ask for a billion dollar company. And when you start getting on the path to one, you start to realize what the reality of that is. Um, so I've really had to refocus and focus my life more on very intentional actions and output for personal interactions like coaching who I hang out with, what I do. I've got to seek out different things that I do, like coaching groups, um, mentors and interactions and friend groups. I've really had to adjust that because this company took so much of everything, like 18 hours a day for the last three years, five years that my life, like you, I think you go through this too. Like you're talking about with your podcast, you don't have a lot of passion for it anymore at some point. It's just like, you're just surviving. Yeah. It's a grind mode. Yeah, you're just surviving. And that got so all encompassing, you know, and then you move to a new country. Like I moved down to the States permanently, getting my green card, doing all that, move into a new house. You don't know anyone here. And then you get on your computer. COVID's kind of this new world. And it's just like hyper isolated yeah. and hyper focused on all the issues you're dealing with all the time. And you don't take any time to rebuild your social network or any of that. That you got to watch that. It's uh, so now I'm doing that. It's uh, honestly, most of my passion now is dedicated to how do I continue to build this business at the pace that we've committed to with our shareholders and our board and all these other companies coming on, but do it without completely sacrificing my life, like find oh. stuff that matters. So, okay. So I like that. So I, I kind of like how you, you, you teed that up. So, I mean, I think this is a great intro for the first discussion. So your passion right now is, is actually getting out there and finding your passion again. 
Okay. Yeah. So what feelings, I guess, uh, did you have kind of leading up to this uh, decision? Because here's the deal. I can, I can relate to that. Look, not on your level. I mean, y'all are crushing over there, but I can relate to the feeling of kind of like you get down on it and you focus, you focus, you focus, you focus. And you're like, then you pick your head up. You're like, wait, is this fun anymore for me? Is this, is this uh, motivating for me? Am I waking up more stressed and exciting? So what feelings were, I guess, were you going through? I guess when you realize like, look, I got to do something, otherwise I'm going to get burnt out and and uh, who knows what the effects of that is. Yeah, it's uh, it was like straight up exactly what you said. Like uh, I woke up, with, I had just like a knot in my stomach. I thought I had like um, issues. I was going to doctors to get like pains in my sides and stuff like that. I'm like, I think I pulled something. And okay. You know, I'm actually like physically going through stuff. I wake up like there's no, like there's no passion. No, nothing. I just get up and be like today. It felt like I had to survive again today. You know what I mean? Like, did you feel? Did you feel a certain let a uh, certain level of um, numbness? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I don't, like you weren't excited, you weren't upset. It was just like, okay, let me just survive the day. Yep, and just short. You got a short temper. You got no. You know, there's like there's all these yeah. things, it's classic stuff. It's like you're just kind of like you 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 put let's put that smile on today. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's not real. And so, yeah, it was for a while that you got to really watch that type of stuff because it kind of creeps up on you. Um, and like I, the doctor I said, I was going to, I'm like, Oh, this hurts here and there. And like, Oh dude, that's your, your nervous system is so stressed out. That runs from the back of your neck around here to the front of your legs. That's that dual pain in your hips. He's like, your vagus nerve system is completely fried. Really? Yeah. He's like, what are you doing? Do you have a lot of stress in your life? And I'm like, He's like, okay, well, so I explained the job to him with all this, this stuff and this company and the money raising yeah. and all this stuff. And he's like, okay, that's a lot. He's like, what's it like, like with your family and everyone around you that supports you? I'm like, no one. And he's like, oh, okay. This is where the problem is. You need, and I, so actually my passion JP has always been like, and it's funny, I don't know if this is a passion as much. You get to my age, I've always wanted a family and kids. Okay. And I've like, always been there, but false start, false start, false start, my own thing. And this, this then just just takes up all the time. And then you get that numbness going on and you're yeah. like, uh Oh, this is not going to materialize into a, a relationship. That's for sure. Right. So that was the biggest thing that actually made me look at it and address it. Cause I'm kind of like, um, I don't know if you know, like our, I equate it to like what our grandparents would have had to been like to go through like world war two and not have food and all that stuff. They're just like, that's they just, what we did. They just did it. Yeah, that's no what problem. we did. That's what we had to do, yeah. Yeah. Like and, so, just... and that's interesting because, I mean, I think that's a great point because, I mean, there's a lot of times where, you know, people are like, oh, you know, you got to be careful of stress. Stress is a silent killer. Stress manifests, manifests itself, you know, with, you know, pains and aches in your body or this and that or it can't come up. And, like, I always hear that. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm not stressed. Like, I put my work in and I can hang out after. I did this. I can hang out after. But you're right, though. I mean, the the – ongoing terminal stress that just continues to pile up pile up i guess that's interesting that it kind of it did leave kind of a, a physical um uh a, i guess feeling i guess in, in you in, in your nervous system oh look physically for sure yeah 100 percent. i'm convinced it took years off my life like that, that like it's and that's where i'm like i still have all this stress and i'm dealing with getting new like socializing down here and all that yeah but it's uh I've already got a marked difference. Like you just got to, I had to build my routine. First of all, I have to switch your mentality and you have to build your routines. Like this company doesn't like as much as it does matter, which it does. Yes. In the grand scheme of life, if it's going to kill you, it doesn't. It's like, okay, whatever. Cause my problem with people like us is we got this thing in our head where this has to be a billion dollar company and has to be, this has to be that anything less than that is complete failure. 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 And unacceptable it will not happen at all cost that's how you kind of get where you're going if you want to be ambitious i got I, it's to some degree but after 10 years of it you know it's just sustained up here unrelenting it's no, there's no self-love is what i've so this coaching group that i'm part of is amazing i love all these guys and we hang out a lot and do a lot of self-work but that it evaporated the self-love completely because it's all not good enough not good enough but it's not not good enough. And like, you know, you, I'm a confident guy. Yeah. This is where I had a big realization in my life. I was like, they're like, oh, you don't love yourself. And I'm like, oh, that's bullshit. I do. I'm, I'm like, yeah, look, look, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Of course, I, I, I know I'm good at what I do. 
Yeah, I'm a good guy. I love my family. I show up for people. Like I got a lot going on. Like I, I'm good. I love myself. They're like, don't confuse confidence with self love. And that's when the the people I was with on this one uh, coaching retreat I was at, they did this thing where you look in the mirror, and they're like, "Okay, look in the mirror." And I was like, "Yeah, good." They're like, "Tell tell your say I love you, Brett." And I was like, "What?" Well, I'm like, "I I mean I could, but that's yeah. stupid. That's stupid." And they're like, "I was like, oh. yeah, like well, okay, then why can't you say it then?" They literally proved it in that one second. I was like, "That's stupid. Why would I?" say I love myself. Whereas like people who genuinely do love themselves and are happy be like, yeah, I love you. Yeah. And they don't think it's absolutely ridiculous to do stuff like that. I'm like, that's dumb. And so, I, that's like, <laughs> so, I mean, I, I can kind of relate to that. I mean, it's, you know, it's, you know, you're, you're, your head's in the grind, you're doing this, you're, you're being successful. Uh, and I, I'm not saying success is, you know, monetary success. Uh, but I think when, you know, for example, personally, when, you know, I'm, I take a step out, you know, leap of faith, do this and all that stuff, yeah. da, 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 all this stuff, you know, and like, everyone's like, Oh, you know, you're doing good. You're really doing good. Wow. Great job. And all this stuff. I have a problem. And this is something I'm working on that I was talking to my wife about. I have a problem feeling achievement, feeling wow. like I'm doing, like I'm doing well, whether that's self-love or whether that, like, for example, like I wrote that kid's book, uh, energy for everyone. Yeah. Where, oops, wasn't trying to plug that. But I wrote that I wrote that book and I went I remember I went to casino night and you know everyone's like oh great book great book and I was like thanks like it means a lot that that it's noticed in people and all that stuff but I couldn't feel achievement you know and yep. uh, I'm I'm working through that now so I love how you're bringing this up well and so a big thing with that is imposter syndrome which I'm sure you've heard of before right yep. And the other big one that was brought up to me, because again, back to this self-love thing, it's all rooted in self-love. And this sounds very hippy dippy. Trust me. I wasn't this guy before, but it is very real uh, because, you know, we set this bar of what I'm going to achieve. And until we get it, it's not good enough. Yeah. Right. So it's fine. That seems like the right thing for ambitions till I get here. It's not good enough. Yeah. That's ambition. Well, ambition gets blurred real fast with beating the shit out of yourself. And the issue with this is that, this was the bar until I can feel good about myself. Then the bar moved. Yep. And here and here and here. I remember, I remember very clearly telling people, I'd be like, I couldn't even fathom it. I'm like, one day I'm going to make a hundred million dollar company. And that was like, yeah, that was pie in the sky. We're two and a half times that now. And I'm not 1% happier Yeah. at all. And I mean this genuinely. That's not like a weird, subtle flex that people do on Instagram. I don't care about the market cap. I am less happy now than I was when I used to dream about that. Okay, so I I think this is a great discussion. So first off, I want to talk about, number one, um, the the stopping point you were at when when you realized, okay, I got to do something about this. I got to do something about this. And not only that, because I think there's a lot, you talk about imposter syndrome, bro. I can relate to that. Not only that, it feels, it, it, once I started kind of going down that path and started doing research on imposter syndrome, it, it's validating that there's so many people, so many famous people that you look up to that have this imposter syndrome. You know, I mean, I remember watching Welcome to Wrexham with, you know, Ryan Reynolds and, you know, Rob, and they were talking about imposter syndrome that they have. So first off, I think it's very important for, you know, our listeners out there listening to this that are probably going through the same. And that's the thing too, what this is kind of, I love about this. It's like, People celebrate successes, but at the same time as we're all going through the same shit sometimes, you know, we're all faced with the same self-doubt, the same lack of confidence, the lack of self-love, all that stuff. So I do want you to discuss kind of what, when you noticed uh, this, when you had these feelings, uh, what prompted you, I guess, how you, pro- how you found your, your the, these, these groups, these support groups and, and what you're doing, because it might help other people out there. Yeah. First of all, I love that you're pointing that out and that you're leaning into this, JP. This is because this is like a lot of this is not something that a lot of people have done enough work to be comfortable talking about. Right. Because there's a lot of confidence that has to go into having a conversation like this, a lot of vulnerability that has to go into this. But I can't advocate for it enough now because I've always, you know, I picture myself as a leader. Yeah. I want to lead people. I want to create for people. I want to give people opportunity. And I always was afraid to bring this up because as a leader, I'm always strong. I always got my shit together. I'm yeah. not. Yeah, can't be, you can't be soft. Can't be vulnerable. Yeah. No, can't do that. And I was, and now what I've realized that coming through this, and by the way, I'm much happier now. It's on a path where I'm 
I see the way to grow through this and get everything that I want in life and have this company go. And now I'm not there. That's part of getting more self-aware is you realize that it, there's no done. It's just you enjoy the work and the process, right? All these cliches. But um, it's, it's very, very important to have this conversation. And so I love it too, by the way. This is stuff that I'll sit down and I'll engage with people for hours on now because I just like, tell me your story. Tell, I want to hear it. I genuinely care because these are people, if you do this and you have this convo, you're talking to a human. Yeah. And you'll, you'll talk about business. You'll learn some stuff. You'll get some strategies and you'll get all that will come out of it. But I'm just so bored of the conversation of like, you know, what hit the KPIs. We got yeah, to yeah, yeah, maximize yeah. your team. Going. Let's, let's get, let's talk about the real stuff that, 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 that we're all faced with when we get in the car, we get out of the meeting. Yeah. Because especially for guys like us, if anyone that's listening, that's doing entrepreneurial stuff, there's not a lot of people that will understand what you're going through because you're just not surrounded by entrepreneurs. Right. Or, or, but if you can come find stuff like this online and just have an hour listen to this stuff, you're like, oh, thank God, I'm not the only one. Like this, and is a lot, and a lot of times that 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 knowledge of okay, I'm not the only one feeling this is probably more impactful and powerful than than researching why are you, you know what I mean? Like just knowing you're not alone is extremely powerful. And you're right. I mean, it, you, you do have to have this mask. You do have to wear this. But I think there's a lot of value in being vulnerable. I think there's a lot of value. And kind of saying, hey, look, you know, I'm kind of going through this. You know what? I actually wrote a post about imposter syndrome. And usually when I write posts, they don't get a lot of traction on stuff. But I wrote, I did write a post about this. That got the most traction. Like, holy shit, you know, thanks, JP. I'm kind of going through this too. I can't believe, you know, thanks for sharing this. Like, I deal with this too. So it was, very, it's, it's interesting that the, the posts when you're the most vulnerable are the most impactful. Authenticity, man. Authenticity. People, people want to know people. Like, and we always think as like, Actually, there was a great, so part of this group I joined is called We Are The They to answer your question. We Are yes. The They. And it's based around like, uh, you know, oh, we're, don't worry about that. They, they'll do it. Like they're going to save the world or they, that, that group is going to do it. Like, who is they? Right. And that's where he picked the name for We Are okay. The But it's, it's an executive coaching group. So most of it is high net worth guys that are isolated because they've built businesses or chosen this path. Most people right. have business. And uh, it's geared toward men only and it's to go there. And it's so that we have a place where we can sit down and, and then they drive, they bring in like the most crazy speakers and you do. So we fly around the world twice a year to meet somewhere. I'm going to the running of the bulls with the 50 guys. We're all meeting in Spain in a month here or whatever in July. And we'll do, we'll get coached there. Right. And so we're in this hotel on the vineyard by the running of the bulls and we do the activities in between the coaching but it's geared towards getting those type of people because they're not going to meet at a motel eight somewhere. No. Um, so we do two trips a year. We were in Iceland in the, in the fall, went to the waterfalls and they had coaches come to the waterfalls and spoke to us about inner strength and power. And you could, dude, you could feel the Viking spirits and everything there. We did cold water plunges beside the icebergs as a group. And it's like, but these are all dudes that are, you look around and, and see them in everyday life. And it would all be here. Yeah. Or my camera, here. Right. But what do you do for work? What do you do for? And then yep. you compare your net worths and your businesses subtly if you're not an asshole. But you're going to talk about business and stuff like that and your cars or whatever. This there, which starts off where they put us all in a circle and they talk about really they're like, OK, if this has happened to you, take two steps in. Um, I've had, recently had a family member die and you're just kind of like one guy steps in. You're like, oh, shit, that's sad. Or I have I fought cancer and won. Right. Five people step in. I'm currently fighting cancer. One guy steps in and then all of a sudden like that hits. I got chills, dude. That hits. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just this exercise where they talk about sexual abuse as a child. Half the people step in. All, now all of a sudden the guy who's a billionaire who, when I went in the room, I knew there was a couple of billionaires in there and this is what I'm doing. Like a dickhead. I'm like, which one you're sizing them up. It's, yeah, it's, it's like, human nature. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, which ones do I like as friends and which ones are the billionaires and I'm assigning value to all these humans right? Which is total bullshit. And then we did that circle thing. And all of a sudden there's all these dudes that you, they're just breaking down and you're breaking down. And there's a human moment of right there. just hit you. You're like, fuck. You're like, this is what I'm missing in my life. Cause I'm not living in this authentic way of trying to connect with humans. I'm so trapped in the shit that doesn't matter. Like, is the company going to be worth a billion? Who cares? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. yeah. 
Like, plus your company will get to a billion faster if you're not destroying yourself, worrying about a billion and you're yeah. just creating value for humans and giving them a place to thrive and succeed. Right. So it's just this whole thing where, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm very fortunate to have joined that. We do that two trips a year around the world. And then every quarter we meet up somewhere in the U.S. So we all fly to and do a three day like usually it's in Sundance or uh, around the Utah area. But we've gone to California, Arizona, and they rent a big house with a pool. And then like Tony Robbins, right hand guy comes in and spoke to us for a whole day and did exercises. And then we'll do like physical things where we jump out of a plane or they. Yeah, I was going to say mention that because I, I mean, I have seen, you know, this when you when you've gone on these retreats and all that stuff, you know, I, you know, obviously follow you on Instagram. I've seen your stories and all that stuff. And, you know, you do small little snippets, maybe 30 seconds of these, you know, three-day retreats and all that stuff. And it, it, the stuff I say, first off, I mean, I'm going to pass on that because y'all are <laughs> rucksacking, pulling 18-wheelers up uh, inclined thing. But, no, I mean, it's, I mean, it's it's crazy. You got these huge, jack, bald, like, Navy SEAL cats up there. And, like, they're talking about some of, like, the uh, the most, like, vulnerable, like, like sissy stuff out there and it's and it's but it's so true though it's like i don't care how you know big strong much of a leader you are how much your company's worth it's you're still a human and you're still going through some shit those guys man the bedros coolian like i don't want to plug anyone else on here but that guy damn man the, those are the guys you get around you just realize you're like the, you, you there's a bit of a poor me element to being stressed Cause you're like, Oh, the, I have, I've got the craziest workload. I've got the craziest, like no one would understand. This is too much. I bear so much. Right. And then you go see those guys. Those guys are one of them. There was literally on the helicopter that went in to get bin Laden. There's seal team six. They're, that, they're the hardest of the hard. This group brings in the hardest of the hard. And those guys are like, they're, it's a crazy experience because it's compassion at the highest level. And you can see that they care more about you because they're paying attention there's an element of like that again back to the bullshit of normal life but they are not there to they're driving your ass into the dirt right and it's like this is all navy this is not for people that even think they want to screw around with a weekend thing and so, and so and so what is the goal okay so you dive in you do this what is the goal of this for you this this for me is to reconnect to like to this, reconnect with what the people, the human element of life, like vulnerability, spirit, spirituality, love, empathy, the, the things, the empathy, the things that I just shed for 10 years to focus on this computer screen and a fake goal. Like this is again, the, one of the big things that I learned about that my, that I suffer from is destination anxiety. It's, oh yes. it's that bar or like, I'll, I'll be happy when I'll be happy when, and yeah. you, you never get to it. You never it, keeps, it keeps on getting kicked down the road because you're right. You know, oh, once my company's a hundred million dollars, it's like, oh man, a billion dollars, ten billion. Like that's a, that's a great point. During the during this whole process with you, I guess when you first you know got there, and I guess actually to today because it seems like this is still an ongoing uh, uh, self realization. Phase. What's been kind of some of the most uncomfortable uh, uh, parts for you that that you feel like sharing and kind of what. Cause I usually find this, the reason I'm asking this, I usually find the most uncomfortable things that you're faced with, whether it's about yourself, whether it's about your relationships or whatever it's about, it's usually the most value hidden there. You yeah. have the most, you, it's a little nugget you can learn probably the most from what's been pretty uncomfortable for you uh, that I guess you, you couldn't have seen yourself facing this. Uh, and again, you don't have to get too personal. You can get personal, but what's that been for you? And I guess what's been kind of the, the, the what's blossomed out of that? Ah, uh, man. So my biggest thing I'm always been focused on too, I've had to unfocus from it is this whole relationship thing, right? I'm, I'm alone 95% of my life by choice. Kind of, there's always people around. There's the option for people. Always. There's the option for great girls, friends or something like that to exist. I meet people like girls that are really great and I could have that girlfriend and they would love to have a kid and they would love to like, they would love me and be great for me. I can't connect. I don't know what it is. I can't connect. And then, but then I'm like, boo hoo, I want a family, right? And all this stuff. And I'm like, alone, feel lonely and all this stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, then I'm poor me inside. And I'm like, well, bro, until you, whatever it is that is that, you got to look at, and I, because I can't identify it, I'm like, well, I don't know how to fix that. No, stop. First of all, go start doing a bunch of work on the other stuff that you're not that great at. And maybe it will reveal itself. Right. And so that, that was the biggest thing for me is that, 
I want to solve the problem. I want to know what it is and drill it down if there's a problem. Like I'll attack it ruthlessly. Oh, that's what I need to do. Okay, I can do that. When it's not immediately visible to me or apparent, well, why I can't connect, it that flusters me. And, yeah. and very uncharacteristically like me, I like hide from it. I like pull away. I'm like, because I'm like, I don't know what that is. Normally I'm like, oh, there's a problem. I just attack it like a pit bull. Like let's just, anything in life, let's go out of spinal fusions, to work stuff, I had to get my spine fused. My whole family's like, oh, this is a big decision. I'm like, gone. Isn't there next day? Everyone's crying. I'm like, do it out the next day. Two days done. It's over. Let's move forward. Like, we're going. And uh, this is just like, this, this mental, emotional part of one took a lot to get around. Like, you're just going to have to go commit. It was a two year, it's a two year program. I'm a year into it. Uh, so, no, I mean, it definitely sounds like, and, and also it sounds like you have to got to put the work into it. So, finding finding your finding your passion finding your self love finding the ability to connect on on a, on a human level on a personal level with people why why should that be important to to the viewers out there to me why 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 should why 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 would i care about this well i think honestly i think there's i think it's really i think this might be the most relevant conversation going on today because We've been through a lot, the world, like, and I'm talking big macro right now. Let's stick it to our country, but everyone. We've been through a lot. Like, I don't want to get into it all, all that yeah. other crap, a, a political or health or whatever, but it is just different. Like, the last five years is just frazzled people, man. Um, there's no, every day is just another huge cataclysmic event that's going to happen that they have to worry about somewhere on the earth, about, about many different topics. And it's like, I think like the passion that we had to just like, I know first, like I'm an artist and I paint and draw that that's the essence of passion, right? right. You just, I'll sit there and paint a picture for eight hours. I haven't painted in, I don't know how long because I'm too, now this is the old, there's, there's a lot of books on this. If you keep people occupied with trying to survive, like if people don't have enough food, um, there's that, um, Anyway, so if people don't have enough food, this is quite common in like communist countries or regimes and all that. They'll purposely keep them hungry because people can't revolt if the, when they're hungry because the first thing they wake up and think about in the morning is food. food. I need food. If they're fed and they can find food, now they have the capacity to start thinking about revolt. So it's a very you know malicious tactic. But right. we're kind of like that's being imposed to some degree just – by all the crap that's going on around us. And so we don't have a lot of room to be passionate. I feel like, at least for me personally, um, I haven't had a ton of time to be passionate because I'm just feel like I'm in trouble panic mode all the time. And, right. and so this, these conversations are how I'm getting out of trouble panic and back into like, you know what? None of like all that really matters. And as soon as you realize it doesn't matter and you start making space for the things that do matter, all that kind of just gets a little more quiet, kind of mutes it. And then these, like conversations with you right now, this is this is awesome. Yeah. So, right. so I guess I, I guess those you know those that might be listening and that might be you know in their cars or at the gym wherever they're listening to this to right now and they're like, God, I got that imposter syndrome. God, I got the destination yeah. anxiety. Man, I I don't think you know I'm good enough. Oh, I just got my promotion. I thought I'd be a lot happier, but I'm not happier. You know, whoever. So those that are listening right now, do you have any like? Um, uh, a, a tips, tricks, hacks, or anything like that, or maybe even just kind of a simple question that uh, the listeners can ask themselves. Like, can they go to a mirror and say, I love you to the mirror? I mean, is there something that, I guess, uh, some words of wisdom that, that you, I guess, would like to share with those? Yeah. I mean, I'm not one to like coach yet. I think I'm the, I'm the student in this still. Well, we're, not, we're not asking coaches, yeah, but I mean, here's the deal. I mean, yeah, yeah. The, the idea is we, we can all be teachers and we can all be students. You know, so yeah. this is, yeah. I mean, everyone's a little bit further than someone else in certain yeah. categories, right? And so someone can glean value from almost anybody, depending on where you're at. Um, but yeah, my, so like, as far as like the imposter syndrome and doing all this stuff, I, I always tell people, I'm like, it's, it, I'm not sure how to separate ambition and, and uh, being too critical on yourself. Like, because that's tough. That's a yeah. fine line. That's a, that's a very gray line too. Right. So I don't know if I have the answer, but I have a question. So sometimes questions are more valuable than answers. Um, if you're an entrepreneur and you're doing it or anything in your life, if you just feel that like you're, you're this destination anxiety or your imposter syndrome, it's why can't, 
why have I, what do I have to do to find a healthy ambition that makes me happy as opposed to a self-critical ambition that drives me from fear? Okay. Like, can you, can you give me an example of that? Cause I love that. I want, I want you to dive into that a little bit more. Well, I haven't found how to have, so ambition, we're like, I'm going to go and I'm going to get up in the morning. Typically for me, it's driven by fear. If I don't have ambition, I won't be fail. successful. My p- people won't see me as smart. They won't see me as successful. I won't be able to get a good girlfriend because I have to have everything yeah. to do all this stuff. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm driven by fear. And I think of all the things I won't have. If I don't get out of bed and go to the gym, if I don't do, I won't be hot. I won't be ripped. I won't be this. I won't be that. How do you find, and there's definitely ways to do this. And this is what I'm asking a lot of my coaches to get healthy ambition where it's like, I don't even know how to describe it yet. Cause I don't know it, but there's an ambition where you get up every day, you jump out of bed and you're ready to go after things. And actually I do know this answer. I've been, I haven't practiced it, put it into practice yet. It's gratitude. Yeah. That's Always gratitude, man. I just started kind of picking that up uh, this past kind of week and a half. Uh, this last Sunday, I was pretty stressed out and uh, I had this whole thing like, in my mind. I had all these issues that I had to do. Otherwise we'd fail. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's one problem turned to 15, turned to 30, turned to 45. And next thing you know, I went for a walk and I started kind of, you know, after 10 minutes, I didn't feel anything. And I started walking. I started kind of, kind of getting that gratitude feeling. You know what? I don't get out of bed because I have to do this. I actually think about this. I get to do this. Like I chose this path. I get to not get on a, a sales call Monday morning at 9 a.m. I get to choose. I think you know, we're going to have a Denver crew club event, you know? So uh, for me, it shifted from, I have to do this to, I get to do this. That's a big one. That's, big I mean, one. that's big. And also I want to go back to another point before we close this out. Cause I know it's Friday afternoon, Memorial day weekend. I appreciate you doing this brother, but right. I want to talk about that, that, that chasing that, that, that money side. You, you, you discuss this a little bit, you know, when, when, it, when you put that, you know, Oh, that, you know, I got to create this for mo- no, not to create. I need to make money. I need to, to get this threshold, to get this. Da, 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 da. To me, once I start doing that, it personally, it takes all the excitement and fun out of what I'm doing. When I switch my brain, my mindset to I need money to I have to create something. It is a completely different result. It's completely different passion. It's completely different motivation. So whenever I shift, I try to stay out of the I need money to I need to create something that adds value and that's actually cool. Uh, I, I, I feel that that kind of brings along my, my main worry behind it. Not, yeah. not in a bad way, but it takes care of my main worry. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I've got to do better at that. My big thing, I've always been, it's, it's something from my childhood that I have this fear. Like I, I went through eight different schools before grade four. I just like was always good enough to not pay attention and just write tests and get high enough test marks that I didn't have to do anything throughout the year, which was a, a blessing uh, and a curse because that I could just skate by and no one could make me do anything. And I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to listen. I didn't want to learn. I just wanted to do things. I don't want to sit there and listen to you talk. And so the school system was just not built for kids like me. And then that would frustrate the hell out of my teachers. And they, would, I, they literally expelled me. I was like, I, it's crazy now. Think back to the 80s. It's like a grade one, grade two, grade three. Like how little those kids are. You're expelling them because they can't sit there and listen. Like that's your job. I think yeah. back and I'm like, God, those schools, I would have kicked their ass. But I, the whole grade four, I spent sitting in a piano box. I don't know if I've ever told you that story. Or, uh, sorry, a fridge box. So you buy a fridge and it comes in a box. My teacher couldn't handle it. And that was the last French school in our city. So I couldn't be moved. So he just put me behind the piano and then I would come in and he'd take the box and put it over my desk. The top was cut off so I could have light. But the whole year I sat in it until my mom came to get me because my grandpa had been in the hospital. And oh she my. came in and said, where's my kid? And they're sitting in this box in the back for the whole grade four. And so I have this thing where I think that a lot of whatever happened there drives me now that I must have freedom. Yeah. I cannot have any be, I don't want anyone telling me what to do. I don't want anyone. You don't want to be in a box. Literally. I don't want to be in a, have to go to a job. I don't want to have to be in a building. I don't want to have to do anything that I don't want to do. And there's like, it's an intense traumatic thing from my childhood that drives me. And that to me, like the money is the money. There is an element of that where that will validate me that I've still got to get over. Like, yeah. you know, a billion dollar company there. I'm the smartest probably to do with the school too. Cause I'm like, you know, I wasn't the best student. I got 51% always. I'm like, how much do I need on this test to get 51 and get out of here? They're like 83. I'm like, great. 83 is what I'm going for on this test. 51. I'm out of here. 
Now it's like, I got to make that billion because all those kids have got 90s and we're supposed to do so. Like, I'm going to show you that those guys still got jobs at some, they're making light switches somewhere and I'm making a billion dollar company. So there's, it's a bit rooted in ego and money, which has to, for self-validation, but it's mostly freedom. But I, th- I think that, I mean, I think bringing it back to the child, and obviously we're not going to get into this, but because we're coming up on time, but I think bringing it back to the childhood thing is, 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 I think everyone deals with shit from their childhood, you know, whether it's traumatic, slightly traumatic, the parents not picking you up on time, whatever it is, it does create some sort of personality thing, some sort of thing up here. And, and I think, you know, I'm trying to go through that right now on why can't I feel achievement? Why can't I feel excess? So I'm kind of diving into that too. So I do appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah, man, that's, that's a whole different, that's another one. We'll do another one. We can get into that because I found that all the stuff I realized about my childhood came from talking about other people's childhoods with them. And while they're talking and they're talking themselves through their traumas and in their context, I had, I'm like, oh, it, I'm like, oh, I can see myself in that. Like, and I had that realization, like, oh shit, that's what I was doing. Yeah. Right. And so it's so good just to have, I'm open to it anytime. Like I dig it, man. Yeah. Well, Brett, I want to thank you for uh, obviously taking the time and, and, and being vulnerable and having these conversations. Uh, there are conversations I think that you and I discussed that should be happening more. And uh, I, I just appreciate you being just, you know, candid about everything. And uh, man, I just look forward to kind of round two or me getting over on the cold bore uh, tech thing that we're going to set up. Let's do it, man. I'm like telling Daph, we've been going through a crazy amount of stuff here lately. Like, a restructure, a financing that's getting done in nine days that took 12 months, uh, big commercial partnerships with Corva and some of the pressure. Pop- like, But my goal is to finish and get this consistent podcast up. And I do my work stuff, which is all the cold war stuff. Yep. But this podcast is going to be people. I I don't care. Like, We'll talk about work if we want. If it's relevant, great. But this is going to be about people. It's going to be like this. So I dig it. I get that thing running, man. Me and you will just bang them out. I dig it, man. Let's do it. So I guess, man, I appreciate you coming on. I thank you for being the first guest on this new round. And I really do. I, I, I always find value in our conversations, man. I really do. I think, uh, you know, where you're coming from, you, you are coming from a place of kindness. You are coming from a place of empathy where you do want to help people. And uh, just the fact that you're able to, I mean, uh, what you're doing and the team that you're leading, that you're able to kind of take time and, and focus on yourself. Um, I think that's remarkable. So Thank you for everyone for tuning in on uh, Energy Crew uh, Podcast. Thank you, Brett. I hope you have a good uh, Memorial Day weekend, and I'm looking forward to when this comes out. And also, you can uh, find Brett on uh, uh, LinkedIn, uh, uh, Cold War Technology, what, where else? Uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube. We're all over. If you just Google Cold War, we're on everything. And you guys have some really hot content, too, so I dig that stuff. So keep it Thanks. up, brother, and I will talk to you soon. Have a good weekend. Thanks, JP. See you, buddy. All right. Thank you, buddy.